Join live in the studio with Jerry Ta with PropertyCareHouston.com. That's PropertyCareHouston.com. 713-489-7653. 713-489-7653. Had a conversation with a guy uh, on Monday, I believe it was, and he's had a loved one that's passed away. He's inherited a self-directed IRA. He inherited a piece of property. And he was kind of, you know, he wanted to be able to start flipping some houses, got a little bit extra money to do that, things like that. I'm like, what are you really trying to do? And, you know, where that always tends to lead is, well, I want to flip houses to build my capital so I can do buy and hold. And it's like, I don't think people realize where the financing has gone with buy and hold in the last probably six to nine months. It's changed, made it a lot easier Mm -hmm. to be able to do more buy and holds. You're not limited as much as you used to be. The underwriting's changed, all those kind of things. Some of the products that had disappeared when underwriting got tight, They've uh, they've loosened up again, and so the pendulum overswung and it's swinging back. So, you know, started talking to this guy about buy and hold, and I'm like, that's really where you would need to be, based on the fact of you want to you want to have passive income coming in. And he goes, right. well, I don't know, you know, I had this house I was living in, and uh, and so when I moved out, you know, I kept it as a rental, and I bought my my other house. So instead of selling my old one, I kept that one. And, uh, you know, the first tenant was great, but that second tenant, oh, my gosh, he was awful. <laughs> so I hate rentals now. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably not a tenant for managing rentals. And, you know, we have this saying, let the tens do it, right? right? And so we want people that are tens at managing the properties because if, if you're not doing that every single day, one of the things we teach in our weekend retreat is that the more you do something, typically the better you get. I remember I used to be a very competitive racquetball player. And I didn't want to play against beginners. That was no fun, right? right? And it didn't make me better. The only way you get better is playing against top competition, right? Right. So you got to do it every day. When I was competitive in racquetball, I was playing four and five days a week, you know, oftentimes two to three hours a day. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's, you know, good luck coming in and trying to play once a month right. and being as good as somebody that's doing it day in and day out. You're doing property management day in and day out. Somebody's got three properties you know, he's not going to have the same level of experience or the same systems and processes. You get busy and you're like, oh, I'll just skip that step. Mm-hmm. Had a friend of mine yesterday that I've known for a bunch of years and he's looking for a rental property for himself now. He's selling his house. He's trying to downsize. He's not really sure he wants to live. So in the interim, he wants to rent. Right. And so he's like, wow, you know, they want to do a, you know, they want a hundred dollars for a background check. And, you know, can I just skip that process? I'm like, no, I mean, Why would you want to do that? Yeah, and, and it's Jason's, you know, rental property I was telling about over in Bear Creek and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, why, you know, he wants to just send the information to my, I'm like, you know, my business partner doesn't have time to sit down and <laughs> s- pull your credit and screen it. And I'm like, are you, yeah, it's, it's 85 bucks a month. Why wouldn't you outsource that to someone that does it every single day? Right. Now, now, on the other hand, I also want to point out that for 85 bucks a month, don't expect like daily reports or a daily, hey, this is what happened with your, your property today. It's I not mean, the stock market. <laughs> it's not, right. <laughs> it doesn't move. It doesn't move at all. Right. Yeah. yeah you're probably prop- that much. Yeah. The only time you should actually hear from the property management company is if a tenant calls and says, hey, something's not working or, you know, something needs right, repair. It's a major repair. Major repair, right. Mm-hmm. Or if the tenant, you know, is not paying their rent. Mm-hmm. Or if the tenant says, hey, I want to move out because I've gotten a job transfer or something like that. I mean, what what else is there? I don't know. I mean, that's, you know, tenants call for different reasons. Yeah, though. of course. Like, I mean, they'll call for, you know, their garbage disposal that they broke yeah. on their own. They'll call for that. Right. And, you know, we can charge those things back. You know, the one thing that I was actually just thinking about and I was catching up on my collections. Yes. Like following collections. Right. Is that. Another reason why you don't want to manage your own rental properties is that you want your opinion of mankind to still be good. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> and and I say that yeah. and is is that, you know, the people that you deal with maybe on a daily basis, right. they don't lie very much. Oh yeah, right, sure. You know, they're honest. You know, that's why you, right. that's why they're your friends, because yeah, they right. don't lie to you. You're right, yeah. But tenants and not all, right. not all, but sure. there's always a few that lie to you. Right. And I was following collections on this one where they were moving out of the moving out of state because of a sure, job. Right, uh, house is going to be clean. The wife told us house is going to be clean. Husband came in, dropped out the keys, and we're like, "Oh, did the maid service come through yet?" And he didn't have a clue what we were talking about. And we're like, "Okay." He was like, uh, "Yeah, you had to ask my wife." We go to the house, completely trash. Oh my gosh! Not only did they not clean the house, even though they said they were going to have a maid service come right, through, sure. 
and they gave us their forwarding address. Right. Which was in Spring, Texas. Yeah. Like, not not out of town. Right. Like, they were saying. So, they they made up this whole story. Of why they were moving out, why right? Why they were moving out. Right. And we were, you know, like, you know, stuff, that kind of stuff happens. Sure, you know? right. Of course. And we're like, oh, yeah, make sure you get the house clean. We'll put it back right. on the market. And we go there and it's just completely trashed. And this is like someone like, you know, in that case, you would think that, like, hey, they don't need to just kind of run off. You know, right. like, this just disappear. Why would you make up this whole story? Right. And then drop off keys and here's my forwarding address to get my security deposit back when you just completely left the house a mess. Yes. And like those situations, like, you know, th- in your normal day-to-day basis, you don't deal with people like that. And you ha- generally have a good opinion of people and when you deal with people generally. like that, it's like, wow, like this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we we deal with folks like that in, in our in our business QPS in quality property solutions. Mm-hmm. And in fact I was I was coaching my acquisition guy yesterday and he's you know, he's dealing with this guy up in Dallas that you know, the our records show he's like thirty two thousand dollars behind in taxes and he goes, No, no, I'm ca- I'm caught up and I'm like and and what I was coaching him to say is something along the lines of, Hey, I, I know I, I know you're probably not the kind of guy that would lie to me. And I mean and if you are, I mean you wouldn't be the first and probably won't be the last. But, right. but you know, it's like, I don't, unless you've paid it like since Monday, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm, if there's somebody making a mistake, like either the county, you know, or you, mm-hmm. I'm not going to bet on the county making the mistake. I mean, because, you know, the county makes mistakes po- possibly on a lot of different things, but on whether or not the taxes are current on the website, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, they don't right. misappropriate that very often. It's al- the website's almost always up to date within a couple of days, right? Right. And it's not like thirty two thousand is a, so. It's like no, no, I paid that a long time. No, you didn't. I mean, it's like I'm on the website now. How are you going to lie to me like that, right? Right. So anyhow, it's stuff. Yeah, we we do in that business find people that do lie to us mm-hmm. regularly. But I'm I imagine it's and the good news is it's a small percentage of people that do that. Yeah, it's a small percentage, but it's like, but when it does happen, it's like something. It's a it's a bigger event. Yes, that just right. kind of r- reminds you. It's like like uh, it, it blows my mind the people who come in, drop off their keys. Yeah, give us their forwarding address. Yeah, for security deposit. Look at deposit. you right there. Yeah, right. Yeah, here send me the security deposit right there. Yeah, and then you go to the house and you're just floored. That, yeah, like what security deposit did you think you were gonna get back? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, and you want to take pictures and the and the, well, that's not how I left it. Some gremlin came along behind me and did all that. You're yeah. like, wait, this has got your, this is all your. Look, these papers have your name on them. I mean, like, yeah. yeah. So I'm joined live in the studio, Jerry Ta. He's PropertyCareHouston.com. That's PropertyCareHouston.com. 713-489-7653. 713-489-7653. So. What's the best way for a new investor to be able to get started with you? Do you want do you want them to call you? Do they you want them to go to the website propertycarehouston.com fill out a form? I and mean, what would you like to see if someone has a property that they're buying or that they've just recently bought, they want you to manage it for them? How, how do they get started with you? Yeah, I think if you go to our website and there's a little submission form, you okay. just, you know, send me an email with your contact information, the address. You know, we can start kind of looking at it. Uh, if you just bought it and need some rehab, you know, get us uh, on the front end. Yeah. You know, we kind of give little pointers here and there. Uh, I think just recently when someone you sent over, Eric and John, yeah. I mean, you know, I just gave them little pointers here and there on, you know, what we like to see in a rental property and help it rent out a little bit quicker. Yeah. What are some of those things you like to see? You know, I think updating, like, for example, light fixtures. Yeah. Um, they don't cost a lot. They don't. And it makes the house look so much. Yeah, nicer. most like fixtures are less than forty bucks for the yeah. fixture itself, and yeah. then the rewiring is easy. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that alone, like you know, I know brass was cool back in you know early nineties. Yeah, uh, but there it's not in anymore. It's not cool, right? <laughs> uh, you know, Hollywood lights aren't really cool. I like you know the yeah. drop down. Light. I think you taught me that mm-hmm. when we did. You know, Hollywood lights are not cool in the bathrooms anymore. Right. You just want the drop down. Yep. I mean, those things are those very little tulip style lights. Yeah, yeah. drop down or or even the the scott the, like scott style lights. Yeah, mm-hmm. very inexpensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, helps helps just make the property look a lot nicer. Yeah. Um, you know, we try to again avoid carpet. Yeah. You know, if we can. Uh, it's yeah, it's amazing. A thousand dollars spent at Home Depot on plumbing fixtures and electrical fixtures, like uh, lighting fixtures, can go a long way mm-hmm. towards updating a house to give it an updated look that most people don't realize. It's more important, I think, sometimes than the other thing. I think that people don't realize is that they'll they'll overpay for the quality of carpet. They'll go with a higher grade of carpet, right? 
and uh, but then skimp on the pad. And I think it's more <laughs> important to go the other way. Right. A cheaper carpet with a better pad. If you go with a thicker pad, it almost feels like more expensive it carpet. It does, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing, even on carpet, if you're going to do carpet, we actually a lot of times recommend a lighter carpet. Yeah. So we can dye it. Yes, correct. And so we'll get another turn on the carpet. Right. Yeah. When you say dye, you mean like yeah, you're staining it in a positive way to dye dye it a darker color. You can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but then you don't even like carpet at all. You no. prefer to have the the new thing is vinyl, right? Right. Yeah, and, and you know when people think of vinyl, I always thought, think of linoleum, right? We're not, we're not, yeah, we're not talking about linoleum squares or the mm. do-it-yourself kind of. The, this is vinyl plank that looks like wood, right? And there's two types. There's the glue down, and then there's kind of like the floating floor. Which do you prefer? We actually prefer the glue down. Yeah, I mean that's actually waterproof, waterproof because right. you're gluing straight to the slab. Yeah. The only downside for people is that uh, it's a surprising how many slabs are not level. Right. And not that it has to be perfectly level or anything mm-hmm. like that, but oftentimes uh, contractors will forget to float the floor mm-hmm. before they put that down. And, and most of that vinyl is not very forgiving when it comes to imperfections in the, right. in the subfloor so, or in the floor itself. And, and, and I think I, I've come across a lot of investors that, oh, you can't vinyl the second floor. Like, no, you just you can drop a little end piece down. Yeah, right. And stick the vinyl to the Luan piece, which is a that little thin piece of plywood. Yeah. Or you can even put hardy yeah. wood up there. Would make it but then it makes it kind of thick. It does. Too thick, so. Yeah. But yeah, so we do the Luan piece quite a bit okay. on the second floor. All right. So you're listening to uh, Right Path Real Estate Radio. I'm joined live in the studio with Jerry Ta. He's with PropertyCareHouston.com. That's PropertyCareHouston.com. 713-489-7653. 713-489-7653. Go to his website. Fill out the form, and you, you want to tell tenants to do the same thing. If somebody's interested in a property, go there. Right. Look at your inventory. You have all your inventory listed there. I assume you have a link to that, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Okay, cool. PropertyCareHouston.com. Mm-hmm.